Ay, my. Them Studio One lovers need love too, baby. <laughs> Hey man, if you love my YouTube channel, then you'll really love the Wavy Seals Elite. The Wavy Seals Elite is a membership group that offers you way more than you can get on YouTube. Not only do you get one-on-one -on -one communication with me at least once or twice a week through our live lessons, Q and A's, but we also have multi-track practice sessions, two-track practice sessions. I'll be bringing along other experts because I don't know everything. So every month we have monthly master classes where you get to learn from an expert in the field. We give each other feedback on mixes and help each other problem solve issues in the studio. As a member of the Wavy Seals Elite, you'll also get access to an amazing community of audio engineers and producers who are all learning and building with each other. There's two membership opportunities for the Wavy Seals Elite. You can choose monthly or annual membership. If you're ready to take your skills to the next level and really grow your career in audio production, the Wavy Seals Elite is what you're looking for. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com. And if you don't know yet, this channel is all about helping you to record and mix better and faster, no matter which DAW you in, from Pro Tools, Logic, Studio One, Luna, everything except Audacity. <laughs> and reaper all right so <laughs> i digress man um if, if if you've been following along the channel recently man we've been doing a lot more studio one content here because me going on my studio one journey i found that there's just not a lot of trustworthy and well put together studio one lessons here on the youtube so if this is what you're interested in, make sure you subscribe to the channel and uh, hit a like button on this video to let me know. And I'm going to keep these type of joints coming. All right. So this video um, is a follow up to a video that I just released not too long ago. Um, and it's going to be to actually do some automation and automating um, our time based effects like a delay in Studio One. This is super key. I'm gonna just start off by playing this. Y'all gonna hear the problem that we facing, and then we're gonna take a look at using automation as a solution. Let's do it. Getting paid in the off season. All that beef, I'm not vegan. They used to call me Young Heathen. I keep that heat, it's op season. From the block to the blockchain. Mazda the most same. My coin base like blue flames. I'm dropping gems like loose chain. <laughs> All right, so we can hear that delay on there is just too damn much, right? It's happening at too much. Yes, I could just turn it down, but sometimes I want it to be a little louder. And then sometimes I need it to fall in the background. Maybe I want to turn it off altogether at different parts throughout the song's performance, right? Throughout that song. Automation is what's going to allow us to do that. Automation is literally recording the changes that you make in your mix as you make them. And then the software is going to play it back in real time. Let's take a look at the automation modes that are available to us here in Studio One. So I'm going to go right down to, I'm in my mix window. If you know, mix uh, window section is not open, go ahead and click on that little mix button down there to pop it on open. And down at the bottom of each track, you see how we are in a default mode of auto off, okay? Um, that's the automation. And let's just talk a little bit about what each one of these automation modes represent. So read mode, basically is a mode that's only going to read existing automation. You cannot create any new automation. It's only going to read any existing automation that you have. Then you got touch mode. Touch mode is pretty dope and it's actually one of my favorite automation modes. Touch mode allows you to really, it was kind of designed with the idea of updating your automation, but I use it for general all purpose automation because what touch mode does is it only starts recording automation when you actually touch and move a parameter. So if I touch the fader and start to make changes, it will record those changes. As soon as I release that parameter though, um, we'll basically read whatever other automation is there and we won't be uh, recording any other automation. Latch mode works a lot like touch in the way that it starts to where Latch mode won't start recording any automation until you actually touch the parameter. But then when you release the parameter, that automation data will be held on and latched to the last release position until you actually stop the playback. 
Right mode is probably the least favorite mode of mine because right mode starts automatically recording automation data as soon as you hit play in your session and it's gonna record automation data for all of the enabled parameters. Now, let's go right down to this bottom of the list where we have add or remove parameters. Okay, so on touch, we have parameters um, um, for this vocal track. So far, what's enabled is the volume and the pan on touch mode. So I want to go over to my sins. I want to go over to my actual uh, delay sin. And I want to get my sin level to be added over. So I'm going to click over there. And so my sin level is added to touch mode, which is pretty cool. And I can change these different modes that I want. But I want sin level to be on touch mode. So the sin level is the level from this delay. So I'm using my delay sin, right? Um, if I was automating any of my other sins like reverbs or something, I could choose those. But I'm going to be automating the sin level from the delay um, going over into the delay, all right? It's from this delay bus. So now that uh, now that I have that automation mode enabled, I'll be able to just grab this send level control um, now that we're in touch mode while the song is playing back and make my adjustments. And when I'm done, I'll just change this automation mode back to read and it will read the automation that we just laid down. Let's uh, take a little experiment here. All right, here we go. Getting paid in the off season. All that beef, I'm not vegan. Not, they used to call me young heathen. I keep that heat. It's op season. From the block. All right, so you see where we at, right? Let's 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 do that again. I was getting a little dramatic. Here we go. Getting paid in the off season. All that beef, I'm not vegan. They used to call me young heathen. I keep that heat. It's op season. From the block to the blockchain. Mazda the moose same. My coin base like blue flames. I'm dropping gems like loose chain. All right, and then when I'm done recording that automation, I'm simply gonna change my automation mode back to read. And then when I play this back, we'll be able to hear those changes that I just made in real time. Getting paid in the off season, all that beef, I'm not vegan. They used to call me young heathen, I keep that heat, it's op season. From the block to the blockchain, Mazda the most same. My coin base like blue flames, I'm dropping gems like loose chain. All right, let's take that one step further. So let's say I made that automation in real time. I recorded that automation, but there was just a few things that I wanted to change. Well, if I go up to my track, you can right click right on this track here and go right down to show hide automation. When I click that, then I'll be able to see any automation that is recorded on here. And right now I'm looking at the send level. That's where we were recording some automation and I could come in here and edit some of this breakpoint data. So maybe I'll grab the pencil tool and this section just got a little loud. I can redraw that waveform right there. Maybe this one just wasn't loud enough. I can turn that up and let's hear this back. Hey, uh, yeah. Getting paid in the off season, all that beef, I'm not vegan. They used to call me young heathen, I keep that heat, it's op season. From the block to the blockchain. Right? And if I don't like it at all, I could just make a selection over all this automation data, delete it, and get back to scratch, all right? I hope you found that tutorial to be helpful in getting you some movement around your session. You can automate a lot of different parameters, not just volume, not just the send level, but you can really get creative. And this is what's gonna help make your mix stand apart and actually have more life to it. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com. Studio One um, is actually a very powerful doll. If you wanna learn more about it, make sure you subscribe to this channel and let me know down in the comments that you want more Studio One content. Check out the website, wavywayne.com, to grab a Studio One template that'll help you to record and mix better and faster. Be dope.